the Canada at the end. You get all kinds of dodgy websites, and I think they capitalize, and people are just typing that. Yeah. So. But well, we wait with bated breath as to what uh, what what's coming next on Diaspora. If anybody hasn't joined yet, and this is, I've had a few emails, and there's been a little bit of confusion about how Diaspora works. Join Diaspora is in inverted commas the official site uh, of the, the whole service, uh, the developer site, if you will, of the Diaspora network. However, Diaspora is very different to Facebook or um, Google Plus, where you don't actually need to go to Google Plus, uh, Diaspora, uh, joindiaspora.com to join a network. There are many pods that are all around the country and all around the world, which you can join, and you can still be part of the Diaspora network, still see all the posts that everybody else sees. The only difference being is that you're on a different pod. Uh, because it's, it works in a very decentralised way. And there's one pod in particular, one that's based in London, and so if there's any Londoners listening, fancy supporting their local pod, that's probably the, the place to go. I wish I had the link to hand for all the Diaspora pods. I don't, but I will put that in the show notes, because um, one of the official Diaspora uh, posters said that uh, produces a link with a list of all the pods and shows their uptime and how reliable they are, etc, etc. So it's a very good site to, if you're looking to join the network and can't get on to joindiaspora.com. Um, although I think that's going to be changing because when these new updates are released, I think it goes to beta and I'm assuming that means it's going to be a more open, uh, a more open joining mechanism than after that. And so uh, we shall look forward to that. Um, now, looking at the list of things we've got on here, um, Mark Shuttleworth, I believe uh, you've got some things to say on that, Roy. Yeah, well, um, well, yeah, it's a few things to say about the tablets, uh, I suppose. Uh, any person who's uh, like watching Linux news these days, it's quite dry. Uh, I've said it before. Uh, there is loads about Android. Uh, Android is basically Linux with Java or not Java, Dell. You can top of that. And it's all sorts of other things, like the shops and applications and so on and so forth. Uh, but if you're looking at things like Linux, and if you look at things like Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu has been very quiet, like I mentioned before. Uh, Linux doesn't exist so much. But then all of a sudden the news was very much awash with you know, news about Linux, and especially Ubuntu. And that's because uh, Mark Shuttleworth, you know, just, uh, you know, went on stage and suppose that's enough to kind of get people excited. And think this is the future of Linux. And uh, listen to his words. And, uh, and he, uh, he basically mentioned Ubuntu is going to target the uh, devices and tablets and even phones, like smartphones and stuff. Which isn't exactly surprising because they moved towards Unity and they were working on things like sub notebooks before. And they, I think they mentioned tablets just, just remotely. So, um, so basically, it says, you know, the word tablets, the word smartphones, and all journalists like sitting down writing down, yeah, Linux goes this, Ubuntu uh, is going to compete with Android. Uh, so you see loads of headlines about that. I, see, I saw at least 30 headlines. There are three fairly major publications too, uh, which is a good thing. You know, you kind of know Linux is still around, not just in Android form. Um, and uh, and basically there were also discussions about can he mostly compete with Android? And that's the funny thing. Here we are in 2011. Uh, WebOS is kind of officially. I think HP is now officially going to kill it. Uh, I don't think they'll open source it. There are some pleas, you know, just open source it. Uh, and the the word rumors they might sell it to someone. Maybe uh, Amazon was interested, but Amazon seems to be very much interested now in Android, uh, especially with the Kindle Fire. And uh, Samsung was rumored to be maybe interested, uh, but maybe it will be dead. And one of the main competitions they had, except for Apple, was was basically Android. How do we compete with the Android shop? How do we grab developers? Uh, and then there was uh, Migo, and Migo is not dead, but you know it's it's there is tie, tie, it ties in it, I think it's called, uh, with you know Intel behind it, uh, and that's also having to compete with Android, which enters things like you know uh, entertainment systems and cars and <clears throat> watches and all kinds of stuff. Uh, and then we have this Ubuntu, which is like a really small startup in the UK. I think they have about 200 employees, and they also have to compete against Android. And I'm not sure how they're going to do that. One of the things they can offer is that the point of view of like, you know, this is free software, and <clears throat> you can install anything you want, you can modify the software, you can boot the phone with any firmware you want to, which isn't always possible with Motorola phones, for example. So, so yeah, basically Ubuntu might be uh, not just a basic desktop operating system, but whenever you use something like Unity, which I think we'll talk about next, is uh, bear in mind this is apparently part of the 
canonical strategy to move not just towards servers for money, but also towards devices. So, so they can basically license the operating system and charge the, uh, the manufacturer some money, maybe to just put like Ubuntu on top of that, and maybe some self proprietary software, uh, or a cloud, so called cloud access to, uh, to make some profit. Well, if we look at the next uh, yeah, well, topic on our I list, to mention uh, Unity as well, uh, which yeah. kind of uh, did you what, have you read about the uh, controversy? It is, uh, I mean, I, I keep reading about people who really hate it and really try to get around it, but I also know people who enjoy it. So, uh, well, I, I've been seeing a, a sea change in people's attitudes, and I've seen it. Uh, Generally, uh, um, a warming to it uh, in, in very general terms. I mean, when when it first came out, there was uh, a lot of criticism, and I actually, when I sat my uh, my good wife down in front of the machine, she actually got on very well with it. I think I've spoken many times about that, and I, I knew that once they ironed out the issues, I think people were going to start to accept it more. And I'm seeing more of a, a change now in people's attitude towards uh, Unity. I'm also seeing a, a change with um, GNOME Shell. And people's attitude towards that as well, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's. I mean, I, I don't. I've said before, I don't believe that Canonical would intentionally want to do anything which would destroy their position within the Linux uh, ecosystem. I think they already did, to be honest. I think Fedora 16 has got a beta now, and I think the release is scheduled for the 8th of November. So any person who really likes GNOME Shell should probably go for something like Fedora. Uh, and it's important to say that because Fedora is the main developer of GNOME Shell, uh, which is a bit more consistent with regards to uh, to GNOME 2.3 something, uh, which is like the main, the latest uh, of the of the 2.7 series of, of GNOME. Now the thing I, I read about today is, is that the next Ubuntu, uh, which comes uh, well, obviously it's going to come next year, um, basically. <coughs> Basically, the plan is to not have, even as an option, the uh, GNOME 2.3 something. I think it's 3.0, maybe 3.3, 3. maybe 2.32 or something. Uh, and, and some people are disappointed because some of them were trying to just install, uh, basically install Ubuntu and move back to what they're accustomed to from 10.04 uh, or any of the eight very uh, uh, recent releases. You know, even even if you were using Ubuntu about a year ago, you probably did use the uh, GNOME 2, uh, one of the versions based on GNOME 2 series. Uh, and all of a sudden, they have they give you two options. They say, well, we'll give you Unity. If you don't like Unity now, well, you can use the uh, GNOME default, but that's going to be GNOME 3. Then in the next release, that's the only options you'll have, unless of course you uh, just you know sudo up get. Uh, uh, install uh, Kubuntu desktop or KDE desktop with a dash in the middle, um, which basically means you kind of get something very similar to Kubuntu. Uh, and the latest release of Ubuntu, of Kubuntu is, has got uh, KDE 4.7, and I think that's the first one that has that among the more, more main distributions. Uh, to have this version of KDE, and I know you've moved to KDE, didn't you? Yeah, I mean. Uh uh, the distro I'm running at the moment is running uh, 4.6.5 uh, KDE, and it's, it's funny you should mention KDE because today sees the release of um, 4.7.3, I believe, which offers some bug fixes uh, to previous uh, previous versions. Um, I don't have the um, I don't have the change log in front of me, so I can't say what exactly has been. Uh, it's probably a small about. release. But yeah. It's, a, uh, yeah, it's the three at the end, so. I'm not sure it's just, very confusing. Just very briefly, going back to Ubuntu, I understand that the next LTS is going to be supported for five years instead of three. Yeah. I think I read, which I, I think is a, a fantastic idea. I mean, the last LTS I used of Ubuntu, and it was the last release of Ubuntu I used on my desktop as my main uh, distro, it was 8.4, I believe it was, uh, from, yeah, I think 2008, yeah. And, um, oh, 04. Sorry? 04. Yeah, 8.04, yeah. And uh, I think it's a fantastic idea. I, I've often argued, especially certainly with a, a dare I say, a big name distro like Ubuntu, the regular release schedule is quite off-putting to uh, a lot of users. Um, and I think giving it a little bit of stability and a bit of long-term support and showing that you're going to be supporting it for a long time is 
really a good, a good message to an average user. I mean, if you look at Windows XP, for example, you've had, you've got users which have maybe used that for, you know, six or seven years, um, or even longer. And to have an operating system, a new operating system that is going to be sticking around in the form that they've got it currently on their system, uh, it's quite, I think it's quite reassuring. Yeah. I think so the downside though is, um, well, you obviously know Debian is doing something very similar. They only ever release once.